Encode your DNA. Define your genetic structure. Choose a genetic resilience. Define your genetic structure. Choose a genetic resilience. Choose your first style. Pick your main color. Choose your detail color. Pick a class, mercenary, deadeye, commando, cyphreak, saboteur, sentinel, sascom, deadeye, mercenary. Mercenary chosen. That'll work. Here's somebody with a troubled past, drawn into the spotlight of a story that's already begun. We're already at a crossroads. Choosing a path in life is that fork in the road where you make a choice or simply stop living. But for you, it's not only a crossroad, but a choice. A reflection of your key, the primal energy that flows through everything. Let me introduce myself. I'm the light and bright side of you, or your inner voice to be precise. An echo of balance and consequence of your actions as you move forward. Seems more like you're being lightheaded if you ask me, but you'll come around. But what comes around goes all the way back around. So it's better to stick to your instincts. You can't fight what's in your nature. In your nature? And here I was hoping we'd be all about natural selection, survival of the strongest and so forth. If that's not instinct, then I don't know what is. 
natural selection is all about evolution and progress. And as soon as there's enough light, darkness will disappear. Right is always right. Stories of death and the bodies left behind, a reminder that we're at the mercy of nature and the one that preys on others. Do you remember the beast that shattered your family? Or did you choose to forget? You turned your back on our world and got lost in your own. Meanwhile, the predator only grew stronger. for it. This is not the time nor place to end this story. This time, it was best to run and live to fight another day. Let us hope you're ready for it when it comes. Predator isn't the only threat. The wildlife started to mutate when the end of days began, and the tree of life started to die.
Oil sludges everywhere. To most, it only means death, but some have adapted to the new environment and changed with it. Evolution has its ways. That's sure to be useful.
Look, an emergency box from the once was. A rare sight. looks weak. The claw bar should come in handy. Whoa! It's time to find a way out of this place. No, really, I mean it. The Morks produce biomatter in their multi-organ that they shed under distress. Blobs that affect the cellular coding strands of any living being when absorbed, including you. Time to see what's above. Toxanol built vessel 
animals called arcs to save themselves from the impending doom. But was it too late? It is only from the flight logs of the single arc they left behind that we know other arcs traveled through the sky and beyond. It seems those that came before us never lost hope in finding a new home for their kind. Just a few moves left, make them count. There are few records of the chain of events that led to the big apocalypse eons ago, but it's clear the world wasn't prepared for how recklessly the Toxinol Corporation would make its mark on the world. Their rare earth mining and nuclear industries generated tons of waste, and without consideration for the future, they dumped it all in landfills until they ran out of space. That's when they made the big mistake. They began dumping the toxic waste in the surf just off the coast instead, assuming that it would sink and decay with time. And they were right, but no one was prepared for what was about to unfold. Once in the surf, the radiation interfered with the genetics of the wildlife and created bizarre mutations in their offspring. It had an inconceivable impact on biodiversity and the entire ecosystem. The world as they knew it crumbled as nature retaliated. It would never be the same again, and what remained of it became ours. of spark metal going pew pew is never a good thing. It's coming from behind that door. A warning label. The box looks like a potential brain melt. It's going to take a bit of puzzling to short circuit the door. There you go. The wheeled one is outnumbered. You'd better help him out.
That's the good stuff. That's the last of them. Let's talk to the wheel one before backup arrives. Let's pocket that. He wants to thank you for taking his side against the scavengers. He sounds familiar. You just can't figure out why. He presents himself as out of date. He knows he's way overdue, but he hasn't given up. He doesn't seem surprised that you don't recognize him. You were just a child back then, the night everything changed. There have been rumors of a one-eyed Ronin seen outside the Great War, and he's happy to see it's true. The legend of the one-eyed child that grew up as an outcast is old and sad. The child could have been anyone, but the evil it had fled had left a mark, a facial scar to remember the past. It's a scar you're covering under that eye patch, isn't it? But he would have recognized you anyways. You look exactly like your Muma. There's no doubt you're the child, and that what Lupa Lupin did to your village, your Muma and Popsy, was the beginning of the end. He says it has taken you a long time to bring the past back up to the present, to find your way back, but he's grateful you have. It was after the attack that the unity fell apart. Your Muma's disciples divided and formed tribes as a reaction to the blight that had fallen upon the land. The impending threat of the World Eaters bringing down the Tree of Life is ever so close. He also worries about the Jagni tribe that's actively working for a doomsday and purging of the world. Had it not been for the Tree of Life, no one would have survived. He hopes you at least remember the tree. Asks if you were tired, as it's a bit of a hike here from the village. He wonders if your Muma knows you are here. <laughs> You're such a good child, so you probably did. Even the young forget. <laughs> he understands why you came all the way out here, to see them, the potato people. <laughs> The Potato People, or Nono, are a wonder somehow interlinked with this little tree here fueling its source of life. <laughs> you might be right. Like potatoes, they're packed with energy, an excellent source of key. <laughs> the Nono prefer to hide in glitter grass, 
He says you should get over there and ruffle it. See if you can make one come out of hiding. should be proud. They don't come out for everyone. <laughs> the Nono's key energy is just what the Pensai needs to complete its cycle and grow into a tree of life. <laughs> the small tree you saw up there where you met will eventually grow into a tree of life and start giving back to nature. It'll be the heart of the land. <laughs> You'll need to support the tree for a long time to come. The only way it'll grow tall is with the burst of key released from the Nono as they become one with the tree. You'll need a net to catch the Nono, and he wants you to use his, but asks you to be gentle. The Nono are sensitive beings, an embodiment of key, the primal energy. You handle that net like you've never done anything else. He's impressed. He's grateful for all the help he can get. There's lots of Nono out there that need to be guided to the roots of the Pensai tree. Oh, it'll need a continuous flux of key over the 20, 12 months to come, so countless, he'd say. <laughs> One day, he hopes the tree will have grown tall enough to sustain the world. But today, your focus is getting this one to become one with the tree. Now that you've seen the Nono's connection with the tree with your own eyes, you have no reason to doubt. From this day on, he'll make nurturing the Pensai into a tree of life, a life goal, not only for our village's sake, but for all of us, everyone. One day, the land won't be as peaceful. Not even your Moomer will be able to protect us. <laughs> you can already see the effects from how reckless those before us acted, and unless something changes, we're doomed. The land won't survive the side effects of the old world's industrial advances. <laughs> he says you'd better hurry back to the village before your Moomer comes looking for you. You did good here today. No, she's got lots on her mind and needs rest after the raid last night on the Lupin camp with her disciples. Wonders if they let the Predator family live or not. Nick Bebo. He lost you there for a while, but no memory is alone. 
It's part of a trail you can follow. He says he remembers every single day he devoted to growing the tree of life, but now he's afraid it might be in vain. The tree started to die when the end of days begun, and it wasn't long after that that the world eaters arrived. Records tell of the ruinous devastation the Toxinol Corporation inflicted on the land. The apocalypse sparked a re-evolution, the second coming, and our lineage. His friend Gizmo is working on a Mekton and needs help defeating the Jumbo Puff at the end of the West Route. Wiz is still repairing his octopod to confront the murk puff that dwells deep down under the surface at the end of the northwest route. Noko has tamed the midget and is preparing to take on the hoof puff at the end of the east route. Finally, Goop is almost done with the Goo Glide a machine able to ride the waves of the surf all the way out to the Porky Puff at the end of the route to the southeast. Out of date, says his friends, are gearing up to stop the World Eaters. There's one at the end of each route. The road ahead won't be easy, but he's counting on your support. His friends aren't strong enough to end this on their own. He wants you to understand that you'll all die if the tree isn't saved. His friends have prepared something specific for each world eater. The Mekton, the Octopod, the Majut, and the Googlide are almost ready to ride. Miami. Regardless, you'll meet again once you've played your part in the tribe war and the situation with the world eaters. way out is through the roof where they came in, and the rope looks strong enough to climb. tree of life is dying. Its days are numbered. Without help, it can't endure the environmental change and assault from the world eaters. A signpost maps it out for the cartographically challenged. Let's see.
Let's see. 